Okay, pretty ladies, welcome to day one. Happy Monday. Today we're going to share the first tip of our fixing for the family group, and we're going to focus on starting small, taking baby steps. And this isn't super important because let's just be honest, this process of feeding our families and we're all in different places, but it can feel overwhelming. I don't know about you guys, but as a busy mom, as my family grew, we have four kids. I I used the McDonald's play place for a break. <laughs> I would take my girls who were 13 months apart to the McDonald's play place so that I could sit in quiet. <laughs> I did. I did. I grew up on boxed mashed potatoes and rice a -roni. That was part of what my family did as those types of foods became more prevalent and my mom was going through nursing school, we ate processed foods, for real. So figuring out where to start when I was in this habit of convenience foods and fast foods and it was not easy. And looking at a label, overwhelmed me. So what I just want to encourage you all is wherever you're at on your journey, like just embrace it and start small. You have to, because if you go into that pantry and you rate it today, you're going to have a civil war in your house. And many of you are here and you shared with me that you have serious kickback coming from either your hubby or your kids. And so this week, we're going to share some tips for how to get people moving in the right direction in your house. But I just want to encourage you to start small. And we're going to focus a little bit today on why maybe this is an issue and why it's important. So I have some stats that I'm going to share with you guys. So if I look at my computer, that's what I'm doing. It does not take long, you guys. If you do a simple Google search, you will see that our country has rising rates of all types of disease, all types. And there is increasing evidence, again, that you can all look up yourself that relates our current nutrition, nutritional deficiencies, and the sugar and processed foods that we have in our country to all types of diseases. And so for me, as these type of diseases started to hit my family, with uh, my father becoming diabetic at the age of 40, with my mom having melanoma, with losing family members to heart disease in the young age of 30s, and then my own husband getting prostate cancer this past year, I became motivated on fire for figuring out what the heck I could do as a mom to feed my family for health. And so hopefully it hasn't hit your family, but sometimes it, it takes something like that for you to feel motivated to action, unfortunately. And if not, you're blessed. And I hope that it hasn't hit your family yet. But here's why. We're going to talk a little bit about sugar and food addiction because it's for real, legit, uh, the concern for most of us who who has doesn't feel like they're addicted to sugar, right? Well, so are our kids with these rising rates. I just want to share a couple stats with you guys. The thing about sugar is it's hidden in our foods, right? And so for me, this was eye opening as I read labels and started to turn over the boxes to see what was in there. And so um, the average American, you guys, eats. 152 pounds of sugar a year. The average American now eating processed foods. That's 38 four pound bags of sugar. Just let that sink in for a second. Well, where is it? It's hidden in the form of high fructose corn syrup and sugar in our foods. For example, a pasta sauce, right? Pasta sauce is a big one, just, you know, spaghetti sauce. In a half a cup of traditional spaghetti sauce, 12 grams of sugar. Orange juice, right? Or juices that we may think are healthy. I used to drink orange juice every morning. Don't buy it anymore. Orange juice, 
12 ounces of orange juice, 34 grams of sugar. Now you would think juice is healthy. It is when it's squeezed from the fruit itself, not stripped of the fiber and all of the good nutrients that are actually in the fruit that would, we would could use that actually help our bodies for health. Our one source that I found said our kids are eating 34 teaspoons, 34 teaspoons of sugar a day in the processed foods that we're eating. That's humongous. That's a problem. The way that we fight this, you guys, is shifting away from the processed foods more towards whole foods. And believe me, this is why you need to understand these numbers. When your kids are addicted to the sugars, they are not going to openly receive the vegetables, the cucumbers and celery that you try to give them. This will be a process. The sugars are problematic because they literally are addictive, chemically. They never send a signal to your brain that you're full, so you just keep eating, right? Has anybody ever thought about like, can you possibly overeat on an avocado? <laughs> Like, oh my gosh, that avocado was so good. I have to have another. <laughs> no. Or an apple. Like, that doesn't happen. Because when you eat real food, it's information for your body. And it actually tells your body to stop eating. So, this type of awareness is power. And we're going to use it this week to motivate us to action. To take small changes. To make small changes to your pantry. As we learn about and add some of these whole foods. We're going to crowd out the crap. <laughs> That's what I try to do. Crowd out the crap. We still have it. We still have some of it, but we have guidelines and policies in our house that encourage that my kids need to try the whole foods first. So your job for today is to go into your pantry. You're going to pantry or refrigerator, and I'd like you to turn over the label and look at the amount of sugar that is in that product. I'd like you to share two. I'd like you to share one that you were surprised about in a negative way and one that you were pleased about in a positive way. And here's the guideline I'm going to share with you that I learned recently. Nine grams of sugar is about the cutoff for any type of processed food. So I would like to see two products from your pantry or fridge, one that has more than nine that surprised you, that you thought was healthy maybe, and one that has nine or less. And then here are my tips for how to start small. Some of the some of the tips that I use that we use in our home. Uh, canola oil or vegetable oils can easily be switched out with um, olive oil or avocado oil or coconut oil. There's increasing evidence that those vegetable oils, those trans fats, are are bad for our health. Tip number two: replacing wheat flour, whole wheat flour with white flour. And that'll get a little kickback from your kids for sure. But one swap that I found helpful was sourdough breads tend to be a little more highly well received. Um, and another thing that I do myself now is shifted more to um, sprouted grains. Now with the sourdough and with any breads, you want to make sure that there's not high fructose corn syrup in there. So you got to read the label of the breads, but that's my second swap. Um, oatmeal, instead of cereal. That's another healthy swap that we've tried to make in the mornings. There are a few cereals that I do allow and I've checked the labels to make sure. Kix is number one and Chex is number two and those have a lower sugar content that I, we do still allow some cereals in our house. So that is my tip number one to start small. I know, nine minutes. I love, it's gonna be hard to be brief here, but I wanna give you as much content and information and power as we can. So your call to action for today is to share two items from your pantry that surprised you because they were higher in sugar and lower in sugar than you thought. Make it a great Monday.